Hello, my name is Christian Vasnight and welcome back to my YouTube channel. 16-year-old Fina Mira Andreva has had another Dream Slam debut, taking out her idol and six-seed Ange Burr in 52 minutes last night at the Australian Open. Andreva dismantled the Tunisian, winning 6-love, six 6-2. Six She's also now the second youngest player in the Open era to bagel a top 10 player in a slam. Andreva is really just such a mature player for her age. I mentioned that in my top debutate players to watch in 2024 video, which you Y'all need to go watch, but anyways, she just knows the exact right moments when to pull the trigger, and she also broke down not only Jabir's backhand, but her confidence and really spirit. I predicted Mira to upset Ons before the tournament when the draw came out because the Russian is a very dangerous player, and then also Jabir had no matches at all coming into the slam, but for her to only win two games total, it's sad. It's really sad. It was really just disappointing to watch Ons out there. I think definitely that woman in final loss against Von Josefa last year did a number on her. And I believe in her recent docuseries, she revealed that she planned on having a child or getting imp impregnated soon after that woman in final had she won it. And she felt that now that she lost that final, a dream of hers, as in addition to winning Wimbledon, of having a child was both of those things were taken away from her. So I definitely think that she's still kind of dealing with the aftermath of that difficult loss. Speaking of Von Drozhova, by the way, she also got spanked early on, falling to Diana Yastrzemska in the first round, 6-1, 6-2. I know she was dealing with the hip injury coming into this tournament, but Marquesa just also seems to be in a flop era right now. I know she seems to really only perform well in the odd years. You know, in 2019, she made the Rolling Girls final. 2021, she won the Olympic silver medal. And then, of course, 2023 she won her maiden grand slam title don't expect that that much from her in 2024 to be honest but we'll see if she proves me wrong back to andreva like i said earlier i'm not at all surprised that she got this win and i mentioned this in my um top player to watch video too but i really think that she be can become a top 15 player at some point in the year or perhaps this might sound crazy but top 10 player she's just that good i've also picked her to make the quarterfinals here at the australian open and i think that she will be the favorite to do that even with nine seed Barbara Krachikova still looming. She beat Krachikova twice last year at Wimbledon. Krachikova retired in that match and then at the China Open I believe she beat Krachikova by a score of 6-2, 6-2. Andreeva was one of three 16-year-olds who headlined Rod Laver Arena. Well, not headlined but they played matches on Rod Laver Arena. First, Alina Korneva, the young woman who actually beat Mira at last year's Australian Open Girls Final. She lost to 10th seed Beatrice Haddad Maya in straight sets. Before, Czech Brenda Fervitova bowed out to the defending champion Arnis Ablenka with a score of 6-3-6-2. Meanwhile, Fort C. Coco Golf section has opened up tremendously after some seeded players in her little path have fallen. Golf was projected to play Leila Anna Fernandez, the 32nd seed in the third round, but the Canadian was bounced by American rising star Alicia Parks, 7-5-6-4. Fernandez actually led Parks 5-2 in the opening set, but Alicia started to find her form and she actually didn't drop um, serve from that point forward. Coco was tested in her second round match with compatriot Caroline Dolahide, meanwhile, coming through 7 6 6 2. Now, talking about this Alicia Coco match. I am so hyped for this. This is a match for the culture. I put that on my Twitter and Instagram, but it really is just to see these two Afri young African-American women going at it, competing on the biggest stage like this. It's so, I just can't, words can't describe how happy and proud I am of both of these two women. These two women also are two of my favorite WTA players on tour, so it's really just gonna be a treat for me to watch them compete for the very first time. They also seem to be pretty close friends as well, so that's gonna be just great for them that at least one of them is guaranteed to make the fourth round. Now, experience will be a big factor in this matchup. It is likely to be played on Rotlaver Arena. If it's not, I have some problems with you, Australian Open. But anyways, if it is indeed played on Rotlaver Arena, golf has played there multiple times while this would be the biggest stadium alicia has played on or in by far how will she handle the pressure and the moment that's a big question and also this is her very first slam third round appearance it's probably this is her the biggest match of her career so how will she be able to handle that moment i don't know how exactly she performs on the biggest biggest stages i know she was playing she played her two matches i believe both on kia arena and she commended the crowd pretty well so i think that you know she would probably excel on the higher on the bigger stages 
briefly talking about the technical aspects of this match, comparing these two young women. Alicia right now is a better server than Coco. It might be controversial, especially considering all the conversation around, you know, Goff's improved serve, especially with the help of Andy Roddick in the offseason. But Alicia has the ability to really serve opponents off the court. She served 10 aces in her first match. I believe she also served a high number of aces against Fernandez, who is a better returner too. And she has the ability to really just win easy points quick and easy points if that first serve is on she's an excellent spot server as well against fernandez she won 70 percent of first serve points but also 56 percent of second serve points won which is pretty impressive parks is not afraid at all to go after her second serve and she even threw in some second serve aces in her first couple of matches however that being said she needs to be mindful of the double faults because sometimes she's has a tendency to really go for a little bit too much golf meanwhile has her moments when her serve is also firing on all cylinders However, that'll only last sometimes for a few games or so, and then she'll decelerate and then even throw in a few double faults herself. Alicia has a bit more power than Coco overall from the ground. Her backhand is better than her forehand, but Coco's backhand is still superior. I don't think there's really anyone on tour, maybe aside from peak Danielle Collins, who can even match um, Coco's backhand. I'm not that impressed with Coco's forehand this tournament, mind you. It's been very weak and it's got the job done against these lesser experienced opponents, but against a power player, I don't know if Alicia has really the power to take it full at full advantage, but even Dola Hyatt was really attacking that forehand successfully and she was reaping the benefits from it. Coco, you know, sometimes she's able to get away with the heavier, you know, loopier forehand, but oftentimes if opponents are going hard, hard after that forehand, first of all, it's hard to go hard to combat that with a high loopy forehand but then too when she's trying to also kind of just go pound for pound with opponents from the forehand that ball is consistently landing inside the service box that's got to change especially in this match against Alicia Parks who will likely look to take advantage of that on the flip side golf will likely look to play a bit more steady and use her athleticism to hang in the rallies a bit longer Alicia is famed for having a little bit low shot tolerance you know she tends to pull the trigger when really there's no trigger to pull so that'll be a big big advantage for coco knowing that she she has higher like consistency more consistency overall from the ground i think parks will definitely need to look to come forward whenever she has an available opportunity i don't think that she will be able to outlast coco from the ground in the longer rallies parks herself is solid up at net and she's a decent doubles player too she won the cincinnati doubles title with taylor townsend last year coco is a very smart player and she will know how to switch it up on alicia if you know, Parks is kind of dominating her from the baseline. She can vary the heights and pace of her shot, especially on that forehand. And I think it can be a challenge for Alicia kind of dealing with the flatter, more powerful backhand side from Coco and that higher, heavier, you know, loopier forehand from Golf. That's known to trip up opponents in the past, and it can surely cause issues for the 23-year-old Parks here. Now, Alicia has gotten better match by match in terms of her shot tolerance and overall, you know, consistency and level of play. And that's what we saw from her during her Lyon Open title run last year. She got better as the tournament progressed. Now, in order to beat Golf, she'll have to be probably play her best, best tennis. Actually, it's interesting. When this draw came out, I immediately looked and pointed towards Alicia and Coco playing in the third round, although I was not sure if it would happen because, you know, Alicia is very unpredictable. I'm so, so happy that she was able to come through these first two opponents. Um, but that I say all that to say, I immediately thought of Naomi Osaka and Coco Golf playing here four years ago at the 2020 Australian Open in this exact same stage, the third round, where the young American kind of just totally shocked Naomi, the big title favorite, um, in one in straight sets. Now, I don't think that Parks will, will you know, win in straight sets, but it would be interesting if, you know, the same thing happened here and Alicia kind of made a name for herself and, and beat Coco. I think that would get a lot of people's attention but regardless win or lose i'm just really happy that alicia has this opportunity to play on one of the sport's biggest stages and i think she has a tremendous star power i actually made an edit of her just um compiling some of her iconic reactions during her first round win over daria snigger 
I hate that last name. But anyways, Darius Nigger. And Alicia actually reposted that on her Instagram, which was really cool. But I say all that to say, I'm just really happy that Alicia has this moment because she's very deserving. And I'm happy for both these two women. And I hope it's a fun match. Just giving, throwing a prediction out there, I guess I will pick Coco to win this match, 6-3, 6-3. However, I do think that Parks can manage to win a set or even perhaps, you know, the match, although that's a huge ask if Coco is, continues to show a little bit of, you know, shaky form. Continuing to talk about golf's open section, the American would not have to face a seated opponent at least until the quarterfinals. Her biggest threat, Caroline Garcia, was eliminated last night by Magdalena Freck in straight sets, and Naomi Osaka definitely would not be happy about that. Of course, Garcia eliminated Naomi Osaka in the opening round, 6-4, um, 7-6. That match was pretty solid from Garcia. Osaka obviously didn't play her best, but she didn't play a bad match. Garcia was just on it. And, you know, it is a little bit disappointing that the French woman could not sustain that level against a lower ranked opponent. But of course, you know, different matchups can cause problems for different opponents. I will talk a bit more about Naomi and her comeback prospects in an upcoming video and what she needs to do in order to return to the sports elite. So stay tuned for that. Another threat for Coco potentially was Anastasia Potapova, who could have played her in the fourth round. The Russian was eliminated from the tournament early on in the first round. Now golf has the potential to play another Anastasia, except Anastasia Zakharova. Um, that's her name. She is 190. 90th in the world and she's a qualifier she plays freck next in that third round so again big opportunity for golf or parks in this case um maria sakari she also lost early the eight seed fell to alina avanesian six four six four just it's, it's a continuing narrative with sakari she has not made a slam second week in two years since the 2022 australian open where i believe she made the fourth round there I'm honestly just tired of Sakari, and I don't want to see her crying for the a millionth time about, you know, wanting to retire and quit tennis and break point season three, if there even is a season three at this point. Um, I think it's also maybe time for her to find a new coach because these early round exes are simply ridiculous. Beatrice Haddad Maya is now the highest seed in Sakari section, but if the Brazilian loses, Golf wouldn't have to face a seed until the semifinals, which is absolutely insane. Former Aussie Open champion Caroline Wilsniaki another potential threat for golf was eliminated yesterday by 20 year old Russian qualifier Maria Timofeeva in three sets I am picking Marta Kostyuk to come through to make the quarterfinals and face Coco she scored an excellent win three set win over Elisa Mertens before I wrap up my day four women's coverage of the Aussie Open I want to highlight a popcorn match between two unseated players Amanda Anisimova and Paola Bedosa Anisimova had an impressive start to her tournament she beat Lumela Samsonov in straight sets and then beat Nadia Podoroska 6-2, 6-3. And then Bedosa too has had a very solid start to her Aussie Open campaign, downing Taylor Townsend and Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova with ease. Both of these women could pose Sabalenka challenges should they come through and play her in the fourth round, perhaps Anisimova even more so. And I said that because the American holds a 4-1 head-to-head advantage over the defending champion. Now transitioning to talk about the men, specifically now the American men, US number one Taylor Fritz is into the second round after making quick work of Hugo Gaston. Fritz now faces another unseated opponent, Hugo Marazon, next, and he could meet Stefano Tsitsipas in the fourth round. Joining him in round three is 16th seed, Ben Shelton, who progressed past Aussie Chris O'Connell. Shelton now faces Adrian Manorino and is still on course for a rematch against Novak Djokovic in the fourth round. A lot of people said that Novak's draw was easy heading into the tournament, but the Serbian has been tested a lot thus far. First, 18-year-old Croat qualifier Dino Prismic pushed him to four sets in the opening round. And then Aussie Alexi Popperin held four set points to go up two sets to one before falling in four sets to the Serbian. Djokovic said that he has not been playing his best tennis as of late. Some of that due to him physically not feeling well, maybe due to some illness. And then also he's coming into the tournament, of course, with that wrist issue. His next opponent, Tomas Martin Echeverria, I think will also pose him some problems. The 30th seed pushed past tour veterans Andy Murray and Gael Monfils with ease and straight sets. I also think Shelton has a solid shot at taking down Novak in that fourth round should they play, but Manorino, of course, is no pushover. Francis Tiafo unfortunately did not join his friends Fritz and Shelton in the third round as he fell to check Tomas Machak. 646476. Six, six. This was covered a little bit in the recent season of Breakpoint, but there is a concern of whether that 2022 US Open run, semifinal run from Tiafo 
has that kind of, you know, caused a little bit of problems for him, you know? Not only have the expectations from Big Foe have increased, but he's also been dealing with a new amount of fame and, you know, recognition and notoriety. Nike is giving him custom kits. It also seems like every week now, Tiafo has some new lucrative sponsorship deal. We saw Naomi Osaka was kind of dealing with the struggle of dealing with these partnerships and expectations and brand deals. I think the same could be said for Tiafo. You know, he has not performed well recently in the majors. He did make that US Open quarterfinal last year. That being said, his path to the quarterfinals was not that, you know, tough. This is a crucial, you know, period for Big Foe. You know, it would answer the question of whether he's destined to be a mere top 20 mainstay or whether he can push and excel and re-enter the top 10 and be a serious slam contender. Christopher Eubanks also bowed out, but his loss was far more justifiable as he fell to fifth seed Andre Rublev. Rublev now faces another American and Sebi Korda in the third round. Yannick Sinner, Alex D. Menor, Stefano Tsitsipas, and Karen Hatchinov will join them in the round of 32. Looking ahead to day five and the top matches to watch, of course, the top, top match to watch for me will be Iga Svantec taking on Daniel Collins. This will be a rematch of the 2022 Australian Open semifinals where Collins absolutely dismantled Svantec 6-4-6-1. Now, Collins will be a big underdog, massive underdog in this match. Although she scored a solid win over Angelique Kerber in the first round, she has not, she's only managed to win a set over Iga. And since that Aussie Open triumph she had over the Polish woman, they played three times last year. And in two of those occasions, Svantec served a bagel and a breadstick in those matches. I also think Iga will be high on confidence, especially after taking care of that tough cannon test in the opening round. Next, we have Yelena Ostapenko taking on Isla Tomjanovic. These two have a storied history as they were involved and a tumultuous spat at the 2021 Wimbledon Championships. I actually covered that drama um, two years ago when it happened. And funny enough, that was actually my most popular video on my entire channel, which is crazy. Another slam champion, Sloan Stevens, will take on 14th seed Daria Kazakina. Kazakina is actually the only Russian seed, I believe, remaining after Samsonova, Kudomertova, and Potapova all fell in the opening round. And then Chin Jane will take on Katie Bolzer. Both of these players have been playing very solid thus far in the year and i think that will be uh, a great match to watch and then heading on to the men's side i have three matches to highlight first between tommy paul and jack draper paul made the semifinals last year of this tournament and then jack draper a uh, big talent to watch he came through a tough i think first round match against marcos giron um i think he even threw up after that match so big effort from that we'll see if he can recover in time to challenge paul Carlos Alcaraz will take on the dangerous Italian Lorenzo Sonego, and then Grigor Dimitrov, who survived in, I believe, four or five sets, either one, against Martin Fuksovic. He has another challenge against Aussie Tanasi Kokonakis. That's it for my day four Australian Open recap, and let me know in the comments whether you have Coco or Alicia coming through that match. Also, is Djokovic at serious risk of being dethroned in this tournament? Make sure y'all subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post my next Aussie Open recap. Thanks for watching, and I catch y'all on the next one.